candle. And so um, we're gonna start our performance by playing a, a beautiful a Jewish traditional a tune by the name of Oitate. Oitate means O oh, Daddy, and we hope you like this tune. Good afternoon again. Um, that was an oitate, uh, old Jewish traditional, klezmer traditional uh, piece of music. And right now, um, I have completely forgot to introduce uh, my partner in crime today, who is happens to be Ilya Schneeways. Hi. And and Ilya is originally from uh, Latvia from capital of Latvia, Riga. And um, he is a wonderful musician who plays accordion, plays uh, piano. He will play a little bit later and plays uh, also quite a few other instruments, uh, too many to mention. Yeah, he's he show, showcasing his wall of instruments here for you. Um, uh, we, have, we have met a couple of years ago and played since then and it's been a pleasure. Uh, he is... Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, he, he has uh, lived in Western Europe for a number of years and now makes New York and Brooklyn in particular his home for the last couple of years. 
which makes me and I know a lot of other uh, musicians very happy. So uh, our next tune is going to be uh, a delightful little dance by the name Shirley. Now Shirley is a diminutive of share and share is really a, another type of a klezmer dance, share. So we hope that you enjoy this uh, little dance, share, or the little share. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That was a Shirley, little, little, little uh, Shirley. Uh, today, our performance is going to be a very improvisatory, rhapsodic in nature. And there are two reasons for it. First of all, we happen to think that maybe it, it will, use, uh, will give you some kind of uh, nostalgic feeling of some sort for, uh, for times when we could actually, uh, you know, shake hands of a stranger without being scared of uh, contracting COVID-19 or anything else for that matter. And the second reason is pretty technical because uh, uh, me and Ilya are in a different uh, places at the same time. And in order to avoid the delay in a performance and keep us together, it's easier to do it for technical reasons. So we're gonna continue on and play for you 
a Hanukkah tune. How appropriate. This is the seventh day of Hanukkah. This is a Hanukkah tune. Now, there's a many, many, many different Hanukkah tunes, and we have played uh, a plenty of Hanukkah tunes for you in the past. For, for those of you who are, have, have, have seen uh, me perform already, um, this tune, although I believe we haven't played yet for you, uh, it's, it's a less known Hanukkah tune. This tune is, uh, even though uh, when I say the title, you'll say, sure, we know it. So the title is Mouse Tsur, but there are two different, two different uh, mouse tours uh, out there, right? Uh, maybe more, but there are two that I'm aware of. Do you know of any more, Ilya? Uh, there are many. The there are many, but the two that uh, are distinct famous, ones. Yeah. So, so the, the main mouse tour that everybody knows and plays, it's a German mouse tour. Which is da da di ra di ra ra. You hear it a lot. And there is another mouse tour, uh, which basically has the same words, of course, uh, but different melody. Is an Italian mouse tour, which was discovered and written down uh, by a very famous Italian composer of the famous oboe concerto Marcello. And so he. Uh, Along, along with writing a one of the most beautiful oboe concertos ever, uh, he also discovered this Sephardic melody and he wrote it down. And uh, it's a really very beautifully haunting kind of melody. And I, you know, when we, uh, when we played this melody with Ilya on Sunday, he said, you know, it, it's written many years ago like in 17 something, it was actually written down, but God knows when it was composed. Uh, but it sounds like it's from the 26th century. So, you know, you will be the judge of that, which century it is from, 21st or 26th or 27th, if we so lucky. Uh, uh, so we'll, uh, uh, we'll play this for you, the Italian version of Mouse Soup.
Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Yitar and Maus Tzur. That was a very reflective Hanukkah. <laughs> very reflective Hanukkah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, somebody wrote a, a little message that I could see before it disappeared from the screen. Uh, talk about your horn that you playing. So I'm always happy to uh, talk about um, the type of uh, trumpet that I'm playing for selfish reasons, of course, pure. So, uh, um, but this particular trumpet is called piccolo trumpet. Piccolo trumpet in Italian means little trumpet. And this trumpet is uh, half the size of the regular trumpet that you would see, you know, anywhere, the B-flat trumpet, regular trumpet, um, and twice the treble. Why is twice the treble? Because it's very hard to keep it in tune. You know, a little bit fluctuation in weather affects it greatly. So, uh, but this is piccolo trumpet. What you will find also interesting, or at least I find interesting because, you know, I'm a trumpet player and, and geeking on this all, all day long. I can geek on this all day long. So uh, in, in a regular trumpet, you would have a four, uh, I'm sorry, in a regular trumpet, you will have three valves, okay? Three valves going up and down usually. And on a piccolo trumpet, you have four, four, uh, four valves. And on this particular piccolo trumpet, it's a rotary valve trumpet, which means I'm really getting too technical here. I don't know if anybody really cares uh, to know, but since you asked, you know, uh, instead of uh, the valves going up and down, uh, I have here something called rotary valve. So if I unscrew this cap, I guess, you know, part of having the the internet cancer that everybody can really see the close up, right? <laughs> That's a good part. So you see, I'm I'm pressing on it and the valve rotates. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can see it, maybe not, I'm not so sure. But anyway, I'm gonna put the cap on so I can continue playing. But anyway, so that's that's the piccolo trumpet. That's the piccolo trumpet. And uh, piccolo trumpet is a fairly recent invention as far as the musical instruments go. It was invented in the beginning of uh, 20th century in order to play a Baroque music because the technique of the Baroque trumpet was lost and people were looking for instruments to play high trumpet parts in the works of Bach, Vivaldi. Now I'm really getting technical. <laughs> but again, you asked for it. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm getting off the technical uh, bandwagon and uh, we're going to play for you a beautiful Yiddish melody, beautiful Yiddish song. Uh, in fact, one of the most popular ones out there. It's called Oifen, Oifen Pripechik. Oifen Pripechik.
Ovechkin Pripyatchik. Ovechkin Pripyatchik. And right now I would like to tell you a little tale of the personal failure. Yeah, and I, I've you might have heard this story. And if you have heard this story, well, you are muted anyway, so you cannot say much. But, uh, you know, I find the story very amusing and very educational. And, uh, you know, hopefully a um, little funny as well. Amusing, funny is the same thing. Anyway, so about 20 years ago, um, I just started playing klezmer music i've just started playing jewish music up until then i was a student of classical music and i also played jazz for many years prior to that but that was my first foray into jewish folk music and we had one of our first performances in some jewish community center in long island where was it i don't remember and i do not recall what I do remember was um, one a very nice woman uh, before, when we just got there and was literally nobody yet in a hall, she approached me and she said, are you a klezmer band? And I said, yeah, we're a klezmer band. And, you know, mind you, we had about 10 tunes to our name. We just knew those 10 tunes. That's it. There was nothing else that we knew be beyond. And so she said, do you know Dana, Dana? And I said, you know what? We do not know Dana, Dana. And she looked at me like this with such a, you know, um, uh, I cannot possibly describe that, you know, the way she looked at me with such a huge disappointment coupled with something else, which is indescribable. And she said, what kind of klezmer band are you if you don't know Dana Dana? And I was embarrassed and I didn't know what to do. And it was way, you know, before we could just search Dana Dana on our phones right away and get the music the way we do it nowadays. Everything is readily available. Back then, you know, you, you had to go to the library and you had to search and you had to go and you had to do all those things. So anyway, we played the performance. Performance went fine. I never forgotten this lady. I got home. First thing that I did, I, I called all my friends. I, I searched all the library books. I found that tune. I found that tune. I found that tune, Donna Donna, which we're going to play for you. You probably guessed it right now. And it's a delightful, beautiful Yiddish tune. And uh, it's a beautiful song. And yet... In the last 20 years, nobody ever, ever has requested, nobody ever requested this tune. And so this is, that was just my, my luck, I guess, 20 years ago. But I'm thankful and grateful because now I can tell the story and, and now I can, I've been playing this beautiful tune. So hopefully you like it. It's called Donna Dunn. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Donna Donna. Donna Donna. All right. I'm very glad that she, this lady forced me to learn this piece. Very, very glad. Beautiful piece. And now to a little bit sad show business story that I would also very much like to tell. And uh, it involves a, a very talented composer by the name Sholem Sekunda. And Sholem Sekunda wrote lots of beautiful melodies, uh, lots of melodies for Yiddish theater, for different songs of any kinds. And well, with this particular melody, he was not sure of its quality. And he decided to sell it to the publisher for $30. $27 went, of course, to him, and $3 went to the lyricist. Why? I don't know how they divided the money back then, but that's how they did it. So uh, in short, this tune became extremely popular right away. It was recorded and played by Andrew's sisters, Barry sisters. There were all kinds of sisters and the brothers and God knows whom else who played this song. This song became not only hit on the Jewish street, but it became a huge, huge hit all over US, topping the, uh, all the charts. And I'm talking about Baymir Bestouche. Oh yeah, Ilya is gonna play piano for this one, right? That's what you're gonna do? Ah, you got muted for some reason. Ilya got muted. Why is that? Can you unmute yourself, Ilya? Oh, here we go, hello. Oh, very good. I will very try good. to play both piano and accordion at the same time. We'll see how that works. Okay, can you spin around in your chair as well? Uh, no, unfortunately. Ah, too bad. That would have been really some show. Next time, next time.
Mr. Shane, by me and Mr. Shane. And right now for a melody, which is part of uh, so-called Sephardic Jewish heritage. So who are those people? Sephardic, Sephardic Jewish heritage. These people, uh, there are Jewish people who lived on the territory of Iberian Peninsula, modern day Spain and Portugal. And uh, these people unfortunately were exiled Exiled is a very nice word. They were kicked out, really, in 1492 by uh, King Ferdinand and, and Queen Isabel. You know, the same king and queen that sponsored Columbus's voyage to the New World. In fact, it was done the same summer. You know, so only uh, a, a few short months before uh, Columbus sailed Ocean Blue. Uh, Jews were asked to leave, not very politely. Um, and uh, many of them uh, left, uh, well, all, almost all of them left or converted to Christianity. And um, they went to different parts of the world. They, lived, uh, they went to Ottoman Empire, they went to Italy, they went to Balkans, they went to uh, Holland as well. And later on, to the new world as well. And so with them, they brought uh, different melodies which were composed in the language of Ladino. And Ladino was sort of like a mixture language, uh, just like Yiddish is a mixture of Hebrew and medieval German. And so Ladino was a mixture of Hebrew and medieval Spanish mashed together and sort of sounding Spanish-like, but yet distinct, has, is a distinct language, Ladino. So this particular tune belongs to that tradition, it's called Ediocarida. And what is also very famous for is that the great, one of the great opera composers of all times, Giuseppe Verdi, used this particular tune in one of his most beloved operas, Traviata. So if, if you love Traviata, you love Verdi, I think you're gonna love also this uh, beautiful, beautiful melody. We'll have Ilya start this one also. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
a Diokio Rita. A Diokio Rita. Diokio Rita. And right now for a tune which is most uh, mostly associated with Jewish weddings in the United States for one reason or another. Yet in Israel, it's never really played for any Jewish weddings, which is interesting. So you may recognize the title. And even if you don't know the title, you, you may have heard it once or twice or three times. Um, the name of the tune is Erev Shel Shoshanin, and it means Evening of Roses, Evening of Roses. And uh, it's, a, it's sort of a, a nice romantic tune. Maybe that's why it's used for weddings. But it's also a very beautiful tune. And so uh, we certainly hope that you will enjoy it. And may every evening be an evening of roses for you and for your loved ones. Okay.
Evening of Roses, Erev Shosh Hashanim. Erev Shosh Hashanim. All right. Well, um, we wanted to play for you. And how can I say it? Uh, probably one of the most quintessential Jewish uh, tunes. Uh, one, one, maybe one of the most popular Jewish tunes. And I know myself personally, I have learned it not from any musician, but I've learned it from my grandma. My, my grandma who said, if I knew a tune by the name Chava Nagila. <laughs> and well, at that time I didn't, but now I certainly do. And, and so, um, but in any Jewish celebration across the globe, across the globe, from Russia to Ukraine, to Israel, to United States, this tune is played on every single Jewish celebration of any holiday, of any wedding, of anything. Now, here's an interesting part. This tune uh, is not in Yiddish tune. It's actually an Israeli tune written uh, sometime, and you know, nobody really knows anything when it comes to Jewish traditional music for hundred percent, but apparently it was written uh, any any time uh, late nineteenth century, beginning of the twentieth century. So you know, plus minus fifty years here and there, uh, the tune was written. It, it became very popular. It has a words in Hebrew, and uh, now it's played all over the world. So uh, we'll offer our own uh, again rhapsodic version of it. In 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 this in the spirit of uh, of the Zoom Zoom rhapsody, <laughs> yeah, and I'm, that's I'm, what it is. I'm, I'm and uh, to... and yeah. we hope that uh, you enjoy it, our edition of it today. I'm I'm proud to say that the guy who wrote it or who wrote it down or composed this version it was also from Latvia, but a ah. hundred years before me. But you know, we, so we you share... continue the tradition. You continue exactly. the tradition. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Havana Gila. Havana Gila. Ladies and gentlemen, we wanted to thank you very much for tuning in. We wanted to thank you very much for uh, being with us, listening to us, and hopefully having some positive uh, emotions um, and um, some positive ex musical experiences with us together. Um, I would like to thank Ilya Schneeweis, a beautiful musician, according his pianist and got what else he plays. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, David. Uh, for being my partner in crime today. Uh, it was a pleasure like to, to play with you, even, even you. online. Like, <laughs> like, likewise, likewise. I would like uh, to thank uh, a person without whom none of this will happen. Uh, that's uh, Kelly, of course. She's wonderful. She's been organizing these performances for many years now. And may she have a lot of strength and uh, lots of... Uh, uh, it, it takes a lot to organize a performance, to put everything together, to put all the moving pieces, especially now online. It, it takes even more time to, to put everything together and uh, like this. So we thank her tremendously and Landmark, uh, you know, as a whole as well uh, and Main Street. And right now we're gonna play our final selection, which is, uh, you know, it's called Heveinu Shalom Aleichem, which means, uh, we bring peace uh, on onto you, onto you, and may all of us have an inner peace, an outer peace, and may all this COVID nineteen go away as soon as possible, so uh, we can all, you know what, shake hands to one another, and uh, and just greet each other and not be afraid, and be a little bit closer than six feet. That would be a nice feature. All right, so here's Heveinu Shalom Aleichem. Thank you very so much, much everybody it's been a pleasure thank you david and Ilya. it's really wonderful to have you both and i really appreciate all the hard work it takes to put together separate places um and wishing everyone a very wonderful holiday season we hope to see you back in january for more programs and you'll see david back as well so everyone have a wonderful wednesday if you want we'll stay in a couple of minutes um if there's people popping into the chat window saying thank you and um, you're always welcome to email me at afternoon tea at landmark on Main And David has a website as well. You can reach out to him. What is this? DavidGluck.com. Is that correct? Uh, it's actually gluch.com. G L U K H.com. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Kelly. Thank you very much, everybody. It's pleasure. It's been, uh, it, it, it's been a pleasure. And I see a few familiar faces also here. Um, we'll be, we'll be very happy to see you in person once, you know, every, all the madness is over. <laughs> Appreciate that. Take care, everyone. Good afternoon.
Всего доброго, Илья. Всего доброго. Илья. Bye-bye, boys. Happy Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> like, nobody's sure what to do now. I know. I'm going to end it now. I was just waiting to see more, any more comments. <laughs> Bye. Okay. <laughs>